Welcome back to Grumpy Vet Garage. Today I want to answer a question that a subscriber sent to me uh, about a process for boost control in ECM Link. ECM Link is an engine management system that will control first and second gen uh, turbo DSMs, but also would work on Evo 1 through 3 uh, Lancers if, if you had one. ECM Link accomplishes boost control through using a three or four port solenoid, either a max solenoid, an AEM solenoid, or a Ingersoll Rand solenoid. They're all very similar. I'll put on the screen a picture of the one that I have in my car. The key thing to remember is boost control is only going to be able to raise boost pressure above whatever your base spring or rating for your actuator is. So on an internal uh, wastegate, it's going to have a rating. It really can't be adjusted. And that is the lowest that the boost can go. On external wastegates, like the one I have on my Eclipse, um, you can change out springs to achieve a desired base spring pressure. Um, and then boost control can only increase above that. It can never go below what that base spring pressure is. So I was saying like good brands like Tile or TurboSmart and probably a few other ones that I'm not aware of, um, you can change out springs for their individual gates. I'll put on the, the screen a chart for the MVS Tile gate that I have on my Eclipse. And as you can see, there's a wide array of springs that you can purchase and uh, base pressures that you can actually achieve with your wastegate. Now I want to go over quickly the two different types of solenoids, the three port and the four port solenoids. I'll put configurations on how you need to plumb these solenoids up to your application. Um, so first will be the internal gate plumbing for a three port. And then a three port plumbing for uh, an external gate. Again, this is what I use. And then how you would plumb a four port solenoid. Again, I don't use this. I've never used it. Um, in fact, I haven't even seen anybody that's used it, but I know it exists and it's a thing Then people, um, I guess you either love it or maybe you don't even need it. Both styles of controller, three port and four port, both provide better spool time and better boost response than just running a spring by itself. This is because it's eliminating um, spring creep where a spring is starting to creep open by ramping up a duty cycle to force that spring to stay closed and then elim eliminating it quickly to then allow it to boost control. So there is a value to having this style of control over just running spring control. But granted, spring control by itself will work. This just can improve that response and uh, spool. Also, both of these solenoids, the three port and the four port, they can't control uh, over boosting conditions if you have a poorly designed system. So if your turbo manifold and external gate aren't matched in size to appropriately control boost, adding a boost control solenoid isn't suddenly gonna make your over boosting uh, situation go away. You have to appropriately size the gate for the system. So the big pro of a three port solenoid is you can get two, maybe even more than two times the amount of uh, boost pressure. So with the example of a 10 pound spring in your gate, you can then turn around and get 20 or more, maybe maybe a little bit more, uh, with a three port solenoid, which is great. So in my scenario, in my clips, I have roughly a little over a 14 pound spring pack in that gate. I'm trying to make around a little over 20 pounds of boost, but with that 14-ish pound spring pack, if I wanted to make 28 pounds or maybe a little bit more, I could with the three-port solenoid. I'm not trying to, um, but I could. So with a four-port solenoid, it takes us even further. With that example of that 10-pound base spring, you very well could get four times as much boost with a four-port solenoid, maybe even more. So going from a 10-pound base spring, you could probably get to 40 pounds or more with a four-port solenoid. I don't really see where that's appropriate for most people, but as you can see with my uh, my MBS spring chart from before, um, the maximum package you could get was a 25 pound uh, spring pack. Um, to double that, you would get the 50, and 50 is a lot, but a four port may let you get to even higher boost levels. Granted, 
there might be a better gate. The gate that I'm using is more for a street car. I wouldn't exactly call it a high racing application. Um, but I could see that might be where you need to try to get from a 25 pound pack up to more than double. That's where a four point would come in. But most cars that are going to see 20 to 25 pounds of pressure, you really only need to double it off of your base spring pack pressure. So if you wanted to get a 25 and say you run a 14 pound spring, 14 pounds is pretty low boost on a turbo application car. And then 25 pounds, almost double, well, not quite double, um, is a lot. So I, I, I think three port, my opinion, three port makes a whole lot of sense. Four port is very specialized. I'd like to hear from you guys. Where have you, are you guys using four port solenoids? If so, what's the application and why is it better than a three port in your opinion? A problem associated with running a four port solenoid and it really is highlighted in the ECM link is the resolution. Um, you turn around and you'll see when we get to the actual tuning portion uh, where I explain how everything works, there's a 100% duty cycle and 0% duty cycle. So that's all the duty cycle you have, 0 to 100. The adjustments of duty cycle aren't going to be individual percentages either in ECM link, which is the resolution issue. But if you're trying to make double the boost and you only have 100% of duty cycle to work with, and then you go to four times the boost, you're losing some control there. Example, if I increase my duty cycle uh, by 1% on a three port, maybe that gives me a pound, maybe that gives me two pounds of boost difference. And I'm having to kind of work with one or two pounds of boost. But if I make a 1% change with a four port solenoid, I very well may be getting three or four pounds or more. So you turn around and you're like, I'm going to dial in 30 pounds of boost. With the four port solenoid, you might not be able to get 30 pounds of boost. You may be able to get 28, maybe able to get 32 or 33 because there's that big of a swing. It's a resolution thing. I'm going to go off on a tangent. People have asked me before, um, why would I need to get any of these more expensive engine management systems? Granted, ECM Link works great, and I have zero intention of changing it in my 2G DSM, but it's all about resolution and inputs and outputs. There is enough inputs and outputs on a 2G DSM with ECM Link to run all of your accessories. If you're wanting to run nitrous control, and you're wanting to run a water methanol injection, there's enough outputs to be able to control that additionally. You also have enough inputs to, you know, to run all the sensors that are required. Your map all these different things you're trying to run, um, you, you have the ability to run them. But additionally, when you turn around and have uh, your engine management and the table is, say, 20 high and then, you know, 30 across, that's all the information you can do in that area. So if you have a block here and a block here and you're trying to figure out in between the two, it's going to have to interpolate, which is a real word, by the way, interpolate what the value would be in between those two settings. A higher end engine management system, it might be 40 blocks high and 60 blocks wide, which is just more data points for the computer to not have to just figure out what you would want, but actually the value is there. And the interpolation is at a more finer level. So it's a higher resolution. Kind of like with a television, when it's a clearer picture, it has more pixels. A higher resolution um, engine management system has more data points for you to reference. So getting back to boost control, um, when you turn around and have 100%, and there's only so many data points at 100%, and you're on a three-port boost controller, that's good and it gets worse with a four port because now you're making bigger swings with smaller increments if that makes any sense maybe it doesn't make any sense to you um but again i'm going to reference more three port because that's what i use and that's what i know um but that is the difference between a three port and a four port okay now with all that said let's go ahead and get into ecm link and look at all the boost control tables uh, so there are two methods of boost control in ecm link there's going to be the open loop method, and then there's going to be the closed loop method. 
The open loop method works on duty cycle. So higher the duty cycle or percentage, the higher the boost you're going to be making over your base spring pressure. The closed loop method, it still uses the duty cycle from the open loop method, but it's a smart process that provides a uh, correction to target uh, a specific boost level that you've uh, desired. So the open loop method must be dialed in before you can do any kind of closed loop tuning. So this is what we need to focus on first. So to do this, first thing you got to do is you need to click enable boost control. It's already clicked right here. And then you need to click disable error correction. Now you're going to be running only off of the base duty cycle table. And you'll need to do a baseline run at 0% duty cycle to verify base pressure and then boost behavior. So to do that, real quickly, we can select all of this, right click, and then we can set value and just put zero. Now we have 0% duty cycle all the way across. And again, we're doing this just to make sure that we don't have any problems. Uh, with poor setups, you can have boost creep that is bad enough that raising the boost above anything is very unpredictable and not advisable. So like in an example of a 10 pound spring, and now all of a sudden you're making 30 PSI on a 10 pound spring, that's really, really bad. Probably not realistic, but that was that's a, a scenario where you wouldn't even try to do any kind of boost control. On the other hand, if you put in a 10 pound spring and then it creeps to say 12, 13, or even 14 PSI, it's actually pretty normal and you'd be okay. Um, but you need to verify what you have before you start actually introducing any kind of duty cycle and trying to make any additional boost control. Another thing I wanna make sure everybody understands is that duty cycle percentage, it doesn't correlate directly to any amount of boost. Every car setup is different, and any of the numbers that you see on the screen here uh, are going to be for my setup and not for your setup. 1% does not mean the same in my car as it does in your car. 5% is drastically different in your car and my car. We need to understand that what the numbers and the adjustments are going to be different for every single vehicle. So now that we've verified that we have good control on just spring pressure, now we can try to introduce some control with our boost control solenoid. Um, I like to start really, really low around say 15, uh, percent duty cycle just because we're trying to get that initial start of some control. As you can see, 15% actually ended up being 14.6. Let's give it a little bit more than that. So control up. So 16.7, uh, I'm good with starting there. Um, something to remember is this might do little to nothing in increasing boost over your base spring pressure but we don't want to take big swings of this uh you don't try to you know hammer a nail into a drywall with a sledgehammer you use the uh a smaller a smaller tool so we're going to make small adjustments because we want to make everything safe but this might not do much to anything to actually control uh or increase our boost but at the bottom of the cycle and then also at the top of the cycle it might do very little to increase boost above what you've already done it's really the heart of the center uh maybe the 50 to 60 percent in the middle of the duty cycle that's really going to make the most difference and there's not really going to be a direct correlation with uh a single percentage increase now above say 16.7 going to 17.7 isn't going to be the same as what going from 51 to 52 would be. So you need to know, like, you need to creep up on it. So in our five-speed cars, I like to do a third gear pull just to kind of get us in the ballpark and know what we're doing. Um, something to remember, too, is uh, your, your boost that you're going to achieve is also directly related to load on the engine. You have to load the engine to make the turbo spool. First and second gear almost like first you know a low gear on a bicycle is very easy to to pedal but you're not getting much work done it's the same idea with first and second gear the amount of load on the engine in first and second gear are lower than that of third gear so say we end up getting and i'm just going to go ahead and put in right now what my the ballpark that my engine uh, works very well in i'm up well let me do this again so I'm going to put what my engine works really well in. Again, this is for my engine, not for your engine. 
this right here gets my particular engine in the ballpark of 20 psi a little bit higher um and the corrections can come in but this is the ballpark but this setting right here for third gear is going to get me say 20 and a half pounds pushing close to 21 as we start getting up higher rpm it's not going to achieve that same pressure in second so this right here first and second gear might require a higher duty cycle and then on top of that first gear may require a higher duty cycle than that you have to verify so if you're wanting 20 psi in first second and third gear you're going to need to get it going the base just to kind of get in the ballpark and then check second gear and check first gear to see what boost levels you get into and then adjust your duty cycle appropriately so having a lower boost level in first and second gear might not be a bad thing for you if your dsm is a front wheel drive dsm not making full boost in first and second gear might get you going it might uh help with traction and getting away from uh from a standstill granted with all wheel drive you're probably going to be okay to have a appropriate higher boost level there uh, but you would need to adjust it because again the load factor is different additionally you may be wondering how does ecm link even know what gear i'm in it does this by looking at your speed sensor and your engine rpm and comparing the two so you're not going very fast but you're turning 5000 rpm you're probably in first gear you're doing a little bit more speed and you're at 5000 rpm you're probably in second it starts getting a little fuzzy above that that's why third gears here and it's not showing fourth and fifth so at that point once it gets a third gear ecm link just assumes you're in third fourth or fifth but that's how it does it now if you have a problem with your speed sensor that's what this feature is for when you select use first gear only these parts of the table right here are now useless they don't do anything it's only working off of the first gear settings that you have right here um that's fine but previously what i talked about with resolution there's only so many adjustments that you can get for instance you turn around you look at this right here and it's 35.4 and you go up one it actually goes up more than one because there's not that much adjustment in this system if you turn around and go in your only first gear settings you're not getting as much adjustability and control as you would have if you had first second third fourth fifth kind of settings so that's what this is for if you're having a speed sensor issue you would use this selection right here so once you have this dialed in you could stop you could say hey i've i've gotten what i want i like this i have control and i'm gonna run open loop boost control that's fine running just spring pressure boost control is boost control too people there's a lot of people that i know that uh actually would race vehicles based on setting their boost pressure on spring only and not running the solenoid whatsoever i think this is better but it's still not the best but if you got to open loop and it's running and you're making the boost you want you could stop and run this and run it just fine um but now what we need to do is try to uh enable some correction and that's what the closed loop method is the closed loop is providing that feedback in the loop to make adjustments as required reasons that you might want to have those adjustments really come down to weather atmospheric conditions altitude will affect boost um for an example uh, a hot day you're going to generate less boost than you would on a cold day so if you turn around and tune everything in august and then you try to make a make a run in january when it's cooler um you're going to actually make more boost which could be problematic or maybe not but that's what you want to have a closed loop to kind of help you with that there's also a feature here for altitude so i got in my altitude here in south carolina we're not that far up 171 feet but say i was going up into the mountains and I'm going to turn around and put 3,000 feet, pretty pretty big mountain. And when you do that, what it's going to do is adjust this table based on altitude. And uh, before I got too far, what you're putting in this table is what your desired boost is. So I'm trying to make 20 pounds of boost. It doesn't do 20, it's 20.3, which is fine. And I put it in there. But based on my logs, I realized that I'm not really even making 20 PSI until around 4,500 RPM. So my desired boost uh, 4500 rpm and above is 20 psi but i set these to more what i thought would be more realistic granted 
making 18 pounds of boost at 2,000 RPM is not very realistic. But you don't necessarily want to put 20. You can. But what it's going to do is induce error correction. Because that's what this is all going to do. You're asking for 20 pounds of boost. And the closed loop method is then turning around looking for what we're actually getting compared to what you want. With that, when you select this, you come over to the direct access. And in the error correction, this is where it's actually making corrections. This is a standard table that I did not change. This is what came with the map. And I haven't messed with it, and it's fine. If I'm making exactly what I'm supposed to be making, and there's a zero error correction, it makes zero change to the duty cycle. If I'm making 11 PSI less than I'm supposed to be making, it's going to ramp up my adjustment 7.8% higher in the duty cycle. If I'm over-boosting, 9 PSI, which is bad, um, it's going to then reduce the duty cycle by 13%. As, of course, it starts coming down, it's going to slowly start reducing that duty cycle correction. You know, 9, it's going to be 13, 7, it's 6.2, and then all the way down until hopefully you're getting the exact, the accurate amount of duty cycle correction or the duty cycle that you want. But that's what this table is doing. You've got your open loop method corrected on what you wanted to do. This is the closed loop of what you're desiring to get. And then with the direct access, this is the method it's going to use to correct the error. Going back over here to these settings, you'll see these right here. These two settings here. The lock at 0% below and then at 100% below. The point of these are, this one here specifically, lock at 0 below. If you're below zero PSI, as in like you're idling or you're cruising down the road, you don't want your solenoid doing anything. If it's constantly running, it's going to burn itself out. So if you have less than zero PSI of boost, as in you're well below spring pressure, it's not even going to attempt to do any kind of correction. It's going to do nothing, which is to save itself from burning itself out, basically. And then here... And then 100% below, this is where you want to get that quick spool. Uh, the three-port boost controller and the four-port boost controller can help spool a turbo quickly. What I put in here is a little over 10 PSI. If it's below 10 PSI but above zero, I want it to be at 100% duty cycle to ramp, that, ramp the turbo up. Let's get going. We're trying to get in the party mode here. So I have it at 10, 10 PSI. And then once it gets above this pressure, then the duty cycle table will start managing um, the boost pressure. Now, the problem is if you set this number too high, you can actually put it into an overboost scenario or cause um, boost oscillation. So basically, let's say you have this set to 15 pounds. So it's 100% until it gets above 15 pounds. As soon as it gets above 15 pounds, it's going to go into the duty cycle. And the duty cycle might be like, whoa, we're making way too much boost. And then it reduces uh, boost immediately. And then it kicks it back into 100%. And then it ramps it back up rapidly. And then it hits this and kicks it back down. And then it ramps up and it kicks back down. And that'll be the oscillation of boost. You'll feel boost kick in and then come back. Kick in and come back. So you need to set this appropriately to ramp up the, the uh, spool, the turbo quickly, and then let the duty cycle then take over boost control. So I usually send this close to maybe a little bit less than spring pressure, in my opinion, but you can mess with this too, higher or lower as required to try to get you some good spool. Um, but if you start getting boost oscillation, this is gonna be your problem. This is this set way too high. Okay, now I want to go over a few things that I haven't already gone over. One being uh, this feature here, use latest speed for gear selection. This is for automatic transmissions. You would select this and then going over to the direct access on another table we haven't looked at. Um, the wastegate miscellaneous. This is where you'll input a raw value of the, from the speed sensor of what your first gear is and then a raw value from your speed sensor of what second gear is, and then anything above that's going to be a higher gear. The reason you need to do this, and you can't just go speed sensor to RPM, is because of the torque converter. Um, the, in, the automatic transmissions and DSMs are non-lockup converters, 
So there's always going to be slip in the converter. So it's going to make any kind of calculation for speed and RPM inaccurate. So you need to manually put in for your particular vehicle what a first gear value is and what a second gear value is. Again, I'm not an automatic transmission in the DSM guy. Uh, they're great if you're drag racing, but it's not what I have. I don't have any experience in it, but that's what that feature is for. And you guys that have automatics, you'll understand how to use that. This table here, which is on the wastegate miscellaneous. So this is the error correction and the direct access. And then this is the miscellaneous. This table right here, what it's saying is, and I haven't missed with this. This is what comes. This is the locked in stock um, setup. If your throttle position is 75% and below, the adjustments that's being made with the error correction is zero because you're probably not trying to make the exact amount of boost that you're you're trying to make here you're not trying to if you're at 75 percent or less throttle you're very well not trying to get the 20 psi and with that there isn't much need for error correction to happen so this is showing you know below 75 uh percent throttle we're not going to do any kind of error correction. Boost is going to be what boost is going to be. And then above that, so 87.5 to 100, um, it's going to allow a max adjustment of 9.9. .9. You can mess with this. These are the factory settings that I'm, or the, the stock map settings, and I'm leaving them alone. There's no need to make, oh, we we have no throttle, but we need to adjust for 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 boost. We don't. Um, there's, no, there's no need for that. So that's what this is for. Granted, I did not touch this. I left this as as is. This I left it as is. If yours doesn't look like this, of course you can use these particular values to kind of get you in a ballpark. But this is your error correction, and then this is saying only make error correction a high throttle. Okay. Well, I hope that was able to help somebody understand boost control and ECM link. I'm pretty sure this information would cross over to various uh, tuning platforms. Even more advanced tuning platforms still use three port Mac and AEM. Uh, boost control solenoids. So they work on duty cycle. And with a closed loop, it's going to be a feedback of that open loop uh, duty cycle table. So I hope this was able to help you. Uh, if you got any questions about boost control or ECM link in general, uh, please uh, leave them below. I'd love to uh, have a conversation with you. But if you like this kind of content, um, please consider subscribing to Grumpy Vet Garage liking this video sharing this video additionally we have a grumpy vet garage merch store this is a grumpy vet garage shirt right here we have different designs and they're in the store uh, we additionally have uh zip up or pull over hoodies uh, but by all means go in there and find something for yourself it really helps out the channel to grow but thanks for coming and seeing me in my garage and until next time have a good one